Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. We are dealing on the wisdom of the word of God or the wisdom of God's word. Can we call for our daily bread before we go on today? Are you ready? Release your faith as we do. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread and it's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we are in First Peter chapter 2. And I was telling you something yesterday. When you get born again, there are things you will have to do by yourself. If you don't do these things yourself, your life's journey will be terribly affected. And, and the problem with this most times is it's not, um, it's not now or at the early stage that you're going to realize the trouble. It's later on in life that you're going to realize the trouble. So Peter gave us a very perfect prescription. And, and why should we take Peter seriously? Many people don't realize this. That you know, Jesus said, I think that was in Matthew chapter 16, when he asked the disciples, who do, who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus made a very powerful statement. He says, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I say to you today, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, People have argued, oh, Jesus wasn't referring to Peter. Jesus was referring to Peter. The problem most times, the problem we have, or a lot of people have, is they don't know what Jesus meant by, I will build my church. That's why the problem, the problem is not the name he called Peter. The problem is what he meant, I will build my church. So they have a problem with Peter because they, how can he build the church on one man? And, but we are all living stones now. Praise <laughs> God. We're all living stones. Now, what he meant by, upon this rock, I'll build my church. He said, look, you are going to be pivotal in the, um, in the building of the church. Now, not the physical building of the church. Now, how do you know that? Do you remember? And this is why Peter was very vital to Jesus. You remember when, um, after Jesus was erected, and the disciples, one day Peter took them fishing. He just woke up and said, I'm going fishing. And, and they got back to fishing and Jesus came back. And you know the story. And who did he hold responsible? He held Peter responsible. He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. So much so that because John was there. I remember John was very close to Jesus. So close that he was always leaning on Jesus when they were gathered together and sitting down. He was always leaning on Jesus. And that's how close they were. But then Jesus came and he, he was addressing Peter. He said, do you love me more than all these ones? He didn't. Now, it was thought that John and Jesus had a very close, tight love. Not that Jesus didn't love the other disciples, but more like John took more advantage of that love for whatever reason. He acted more like a child around Jesus. So, but Jesus didn't come. Jesus was now asking Peter, do you love me more than these ones? What kind of question is that? Have you thought about it? But Peter confessed, yes, I do. He says, if you do, then feed my sheep. Simon Peter, do you love me more than this? He said, yes, I do. Feed my sheep. Simon Peter, ah, Peter said, oh. It grieved him in his heart that he asked him the third time. Do you love me more than these ones? He says, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And Jesus finished giving Peter instructions. And then Peter looked around and saw John. Ah, Jesus said nothing to John. So much so that Peter had to ask him, what about this one? And Jesus said, it's none of your business. If I tell him to tarry till I come, what is that to you? You, follow me. See, 
He was concerned about Peter because of the plan he had for Peter and the church. Okay. The next, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, you know, the, the crowd was gathered and something was going on. Who received the word for the day to speak? Peter and the church was born on that day. Now, are you getting it now? Peter preached and the church was born that day. Okay. Now, when it was time for the gospel to go to the Gentiles, who did God look for? Peter. When he sent him to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius was the first Gentile person that received salvation. I mean, they took the gospel message too. Okay. So, um, that's what Jesus was referring to when he says, Upon this rock I'll build my church. Why did I bring all this to you? So when you are reading the writings of Peter, you should understand that there is an anointing on his life to give direction to the church. There is an anointing on Peter's life. Now that's why you notice Peter's letter was not directed to any particular person or particular church, just like... Um, like Paul's writings, so to Corinthians, to Galatians, and to these other people. Peter wrote to the saints. Let's look at how Peter introduced. Watch this now. He says, I, he says, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia. So he was writing to all believers. Now that's because of the apostolic anointing upon his life you see so he was writing to all believers he says i'm writing to the elects according to the foreknowledge of god the father so peter in his writing was writing with the authority on his life so everything peter says it's important you look at it carefully because of that special um position he holds now in the book of acts for some reason you don't really see that authority after a while at the beginning you see peter functioning in the authority you understand you know when challenge came up um when they were threatened peter spoke up he answered you see and then um, at different points you see Peter responding to issues and, and the church was moving ahead. But at some point, it's as though James now became the one that was in charge. Now, I don't know how that transpired. I don't know how that happened. But that doesn't mean God took out the grace on Peter's life and placed it on James. No, it might, it might just have been a human thing, you know, like it happens today. Praise God. Maybe they felt James was a better organizer than Peter. But it still doesn't mean Peter had the message for the church. Now, I brought all that to, to point out to you that pay attention to what Peter is saying. So Peter says, when you get born again, the first thing you need to do is take out these physical things away from you. Put it away. And it is your responsibility and it's important because it's it's your point now when you come to christ you came to christ willingly okay now having come to christ what you're professing is from today i want to trust this man i, I use the word man deliberately see so you don't think it's one figure in your head i want to trust christ i want to trust this man jesus now when you say i want to trust this man what are you saying i i want to I want to look at everything that he represents, everything that he bring, he, he's brought, and I want to imbibe it. I want to follow it. Now, that was a personal decision you took. Now, that decision will cost you something. See, what will it cost you? Number one, it will cost you turning away from these things. So, malice, deceit. Malice is your relationship with people. Get rid of malice. Deceit. Deceit is your own personal heart. What is working inside your heart? The thoughts that you're thinking. It says remove deceit from it. Then he said hypocrisy. Don't be a hypocrite. Now you've, you've seen a lot, a lot of hypocrites. Even in the Bible days, there are lots of hypocrites. It says remove hypocrisy. Envy. Don't envy anybody. 
And then the last thing he says is, evil speaker, all these things will show in your speaking. If there is envy in your heart, if there is deceit in your heart, if there is malice, if you are keeping malice with people, you know sometimes you think you are good with somebody until you greet them good morning. And then the way they answer will make you like, huh, 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 huh. Uh, uh, uh. I don't think all is well with this person. Why? Because you heard something from their mouth. You understand what I'm saying? You know, if you greet someone, for example, and the person doesn't greet you, you can make the excuse. Maybe they didn't hear me. In your heart, maybe they, but when you greet somebody and says, so what is good about the money? Okay. <laughs> uh, something is not right here because of what came out of their mouths. So all these things is seen by what comes out of your mouth. Sometimes you're telling somebody about some other person. Oh, I saw so and so person who, I said, what well, is that a concern to me? Ah. Now, I, I, I thought it's an old friend. I thought you'd be excited that I saw this person. Eh, but what, what will he add value? Which value will he add to me? Okay. Now, you see, because of what is coming out from the person's mouth, you can tell that something is in the person's heart. And you get what I'm saying? Oh, I saw this. Oh, wow. And you know, I've missed him. Oh, I've missed her. Where did he say, how is it? How is it? Oh, wow. I, I long to see such a person again. Like, oh, yeah. Even when you talk to the other person, oh, this person is so fond of you. I mean, the person was just telling me how they miss you and how they, yeah. You can tell that there's a tender feeling in their heart concerning this person. So everything he listed here, the final way to know that your life is changing is from your mouth. So as a believer, your mouth is a great rule, yardstick, to measure how good you're doing. So deliberately, Peter is telling us, put away these things. Now, I believe that's what Christ is saying to Put away these things. And then, haven't put away these things. He said, desire the pure milk of the world. I was saying something yesterday. If you don't remove those things and begin to get the milk of God's word, there is a tendency that you are going to begin to dabble into things that the devil can use to take over your life. You are keeping malice with someone. You know it's so easy to begin to look for a scripture to deal with your enemies. He gets what I'm saying? So you begin to find those scriptures and then you begin to use them. Say, ah, anybody that is against me, they will fall for my sake. Now what's going on? There's malice in your heart. That's why what the person has done to you. But now malice has entered your heart. So now, instead of desiring the sincere milk of God's word, you are now desiring something else. And with that, you begin to pray all manner of prayers. Hey, 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 as newborn babes, get rid of all these things from your heart concerning your brethren, your, I mean your physical family relationship, concerning brethren in the church, concerning wherever you find your colleagues at work, make sure your heart is clear. Make sure there is no deceit in your heart concerning your life. Also, I told you yesterday, don't live fake lives. Don't live fake lives. Uh, even the Bible says, calling things that be not as though they were. So I can be living the life that I be not as though I were living it already. And then so what do you start borrowing things to use and letting people feel. And when they ask you, ah, you borrow someone's car. Say, ah, brother, you just got a new car. It's the Lord, though. It's the Lord. Is it your car? It's the Lord, though. It's the Lord. Now, what's that? This it. This it. And why are you doing that? Ah, I better, you know, I, I, I can't fold my hand. Ah, no, I can't fold my You know, that's how we talk. I can't fold my hand. Don't, don't be in deceit. Get rid of it. Come, see, purge your heart from all those things and then present it before the Lord. Now start receiving because if you don't, 
malice and the word of God will intermingle. Deceit and the word of God will intermingle. I'm telling you the truth. No, how can, can, how can, I'm telling you the truth. And before you know it, you will be living in sin and be giving scriptures on why what you're doing is okay. What happened to you? You've seen people who, I mean, when you hear them speak the word of God, you're like, wow, wow, wow. And then the next thing you hear the things they do behind the scene, you're like, huh? I don't think it's the same person. It's the same person. It's the same person. How about that guy speaks, he, he, when he preaches, it's the same person. This is where the problem is. They didn't get rid of these things from their hearts. They didn't. So he says, now, 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 desire the pure milk of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. By what? The pure, not the mingled. The pure milk of the word. There is a pure milk of the word, and then there's the mingled milk of the word. The mingled mi milk of the word is when you refuse to turn around from the wrong things deliberately. Because see, when you turn around and then you begin to strengthen yourself with a pure milk, what happens to you? It begins to energize you against those things. You're being energized against those things. But when you don't turn away from those things and you just think, now that's the problem. Because some people think that, no, just, it's not a problem. The more you you hear the word of God, the more it will deal with those things. Then the danger of that statement, the danger of that belief is that both of them may end up growing together. Yeah. And meanwhile, you could have stopped it from the beginning. And these things will not manifest until many years later. It will begin to manifest in you. It's okay. Sin is okay. I mean, I mean, it's not a problem. You can just do or can tell lies. I mean, God understands. How old are you in the faith? 25 years in the faith. And when, when it comes to business, you know, you can you have to play smart. You have to play smart. So you tell them lie. Don't tell them this thing. Oh, really? And why? Because you did not strengthen your heart and your resolve with the pure milk of the word. Now, let me show you something. When he talks about milk of the word, let me show you something in Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. We'll still go back to 1 Peter. But I want to show you something. It says, now, verse 12. Verse 12. Now, the writer of Hebrews, and by the way, you know, people argue who wrote the book of Hebrews. Some people think, no, I think let's leave that. Let's not talk about the writer of Hebrews. That's another day. If I enter that now, I won't, we'll just change focus. It says, verse 12, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. So there is the first principles of the oracles of God. The first principles of the oracles of God. And what's the first principle of the oracles of God? What Peter told us. Get rid of these things. That's the first principle in receiving from God. Watch this now. Now it says, And again, the first principles of the oracles of God. And have come to need milk and not strong meat or strong food. See? So the writer of Hebrews tell you that there is milk. And then there is strong food. All the word of God. And you get what I'm saying. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and and evil. Uh-huh. Are you understanding what he's saying now? Now, obviously you realize that the, the writer of Hebrews and Peter, they were very close. Now, why, why, this, why do I say they're very close? They use the same words. 
um, babe. Now you don't find this written in different. Even Paul hardly used the word babe. See, so now, now, um, Peter told us something. He says, "Get rid of all these things from your mind." I'm sharing this with you because if you want to understand the wisdom of the Word of God, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. You've got to get rid of some things from your heart. If not, you will, you see, two things I said, it will grow together. And when it grows together, the problem you're going to have is this. You are not going to be giving access to strong meats. Mm. Or strong food or solid food, as Hebrews said. Because he specifically said, strong meat is for those who have their senses exercised now he used the word exercise exercise means practice okay practice now how do you get to this point of practice or exercise when first you turn away then by the pure word of god but by the pure milk of of god's word you begin to face life so okay i'm not supposed to be in malice how do i deal with people that? Uh, that challenge me for example how do i deal with people that bring evil to me malice is eradicated i'm not supposed to walk in malice so how do i handle such situation aha uh -huh. see you've eradicated malice now you take the pure milk of the word you notice peter said this and then we close with it chapter 2 peter said verse 3 chapter 2 first peter if indeed you had tested that the Lord is gracious. So when you come to Christ, beyond you following him, there is something you must notice about God. That's how you know that truly you didn't just come out for an altar call. God have accepted you. You see the graciousness of God. Now, that's, that's a response to what you've done. That's a response to you. This is not what you fake. You will see the graciousness of God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, you are so blessed today. Take it and have a miracle, miraculous day. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.